Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome to Descriptive slash Laboratory Chemistry. Um, today we're going to be talking about volumetric glassware. So volumetric glassware is uh, glassware inscribed with markings to help measure the volume of a liquid. And there's going to be two different types of glassware. So you can have um, TC glassware and TD glassware. TC means to contain. Um, and uh, when we're talking about TC versus TD, we're talking about at 20 degrees Celsius. Volumetric glassware is going to be marked either TC or, two, uh, or TD, and uh, they mean two separate things. So you might see it marked as TC or IN, or you might see it marked as TD or EX. So the first one is to contain. This is glassware that is designed to hold that exact amount of volume listed. Now this is different from to deliver because the amount that you dispense, if I hold 100 mils and I go to dispense it, I won't actually um, dispense 100 mils because, you know, sometimes the... Uh, liquid or whatever gets stuck on the sides and whatnot. So you have a degree of error. To deliver is um, it dispenses that exact amount. So it holds a little more than the volume listed, but when you go to dispense it, it'll dispense that exact amount. So that's the difference between to contain and to deliver. Again, volumetric glassware has um, the, the markings on it. So if you ever go to buy it or you see it at a lab or something, they'll be marked either TC or TD. All right, before we get to types of volumetric glassware, let's talk about how to read them. So usually you're going to be dealing with a meniscus, and a meniscus looks something like this. It's kind of like a parabola, and meniscus can be concave up or concave down. So in the example uh, in A here, this is concave up, and on B here, this is concave down. So at what point do you read the uh, meniscus? Is Do you read it at the highest point? Do you read it at the lowest point? Well, what you do is you draw a line from the center all the way down. So for both A and B, the line would be about here, and you go all the way down. Wherever the water level reaches, when you go all the way down, is where you read it. So uh, you would read over here, and you would read over here. The reason different liquids are concave up or concave down depends on the properties of the liquid. So some, uh, some liquids uh, want to move up the... Um, the chamber, the volumetric glassware that they're in, and sometimes they don't want to go um, up. It depends on their pol uh, their uh, if they're polar or nonpolar. Also, it depends on certain properties of the uh, liquid itself. So let's look at an example. If I give you uh, the one on the left here, let's say we were asked to find a reading reading of this meniscus. Well, you draw a line all the way down, and then you look at where that meets. It's about here. Now the thing with uh, meniscuses is that when you're reading them, um, you can approximate to one more digit than you know. So in the case of our example here, we only know up to 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, and that's because the markings tell us so. But when you go to read these volumetric glassware, you're allowed to make one more approximate estimation. So in the case over here, um, this looks about exactly 38. So let's say that's 38 mils. Um, and let's do the one on the right. So we are certain up to um, 2.6. So that's the 2.6 mark. But we can estimate one more digit. I say that looks like about 2.65. And I'm allowed to add that 5 in there because, again, we're allowed to approximate one more digit than we really know. Let's do one more uh, practice problem with reading one of these. Um, uh, meniscuses or whatever. Uh, so a student is using a burette for a titration. What initial burette reading should be recorded? Now we'll look at burettes later, but um, something about a burette is that the uh, numbers are flipped. So usually it goes um, that the lower you go, the lower your numbers are, but in a burette they're flipped. So the higher you go, the lower your numbers get. So in the case of this burette here, we're certain up to 6.6. Uh, that marking right there tells us that it's 6.6 .6, but you realize that the water level goes a bit below that so let's estimate what that uh, value might be and i think that value looks like 6.63 uh, mils and that is answer choice c the reason i'm allowed to make that point that 0.03 uh, estimate is because again you're allowed to make one more digit than you're certain of now that we know how to read volumetric glassware let's look at different types of them so you have four types of volumetric glass right here. There's a lot more, but there's these are four main ones. Um, so you have graduated cylinders, volumetric flasks, burettes, and pipettes. 
5 and 6 are not volumetric glassware. The only reason 5 and 6 are here is because I want to show why they're not considered volumetric glassware. Um, and uh, the reason that they're not tells you something about volumetric glassware. Um, so again, 5 and 6 are not volumetric glassware, but let's look at 1, 2, 3, and 4 first. So a graduated cylinder looks like this. Um, you have a bunch of markings along uh, the side of your tube here. Now you have two different types of graduated cylinders here, um, and they have the markings I was talking about before. So in the case of the graduated cylinder on the right, you have an X mark, that means it's to, uh, to dispense, and the one on the left, there's a small N there, and that N tells you that that is to contain. Um, so yeah, graduated cylinders are, um, they look like this, and they're really accurate. They measure with an error of 0.5% um, to about 1%. All right, let's go on to volumetric flasks. So volumetric flasks are used to prepare solutions of known concentration, and they have a really, really big range of sizes. Um, they're really accurate. They have an error of about 1%, and they're very, they're very different from graduated cylinders in that they usually only have one marking. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look at the picture, all of these uh, volumetric flasks have a line um, on them. and They're about here-ish. Uh, I can't really see the rest, but that one line is the only line that tells you tells you that you have filled up uh, the size of the volumetric flask. So um, the volumetric flask on the all the way to the left here is a 2000 mil uh, volumetric flask. And once you filled up to this line here, then that means you have 2000 mils. Unlike a graduated cylinder, you don't have the type of markings uh, like the markings all around the uh, volumetric flask to tell you that you have maybe a thousand mils or 500 mils. You only have one marking that tells you that you have 2000 mils. And um, volumetric flasks, just like graduated cylinders, are really accurate. They have an error of about 0.1%. Let's look at burettes. So burettes don't actually hold the volume indicated. Burettes are usually used in titrations. And like we saw before, burettes don't really use the typical, um, I guess, numbering. In a burette, you start off at the top. If you look at this picture here, at the top you have zero mils, and at the bottom, uh, the bottom here, you're gonna have the highest mils. So this one is 50 mils, um, and uh, if you notice, it, it doesn't really make sense. If you're all the way at the top of your burette, if you looked at the reading, the reading would tell you that you have zero mils, which doesn't make sense. So burettes don't actually hold the volume indicated. They're only used to accurately dispense known amounts of liquid. And the reason, um, the reason that they're used to dispense is because you look at the change in liquid level. So let's say um, I start off at a reading of zero mils, and then I uh, open the burette and some water flowed, uh, flowed out, and your next reading tells you that you're at seven mils. That means that seven milliliters of your water was dispensed. And that's exactly what you do in a titration. So um, you have an initial reading and you have your final reading. And what you do is you subtract the final reading from the initial reading, and that tells you how much um, of your liquid has been dispensed. The last one that we're going to look at is a pipette. So pipettes are used to are designed to hold a single specific volume. They're kind of similar to volumetric flasks, except uh, pipettes are usually used on a more smaller scale. You have really small volumetric flasks, but pipettes are more generally used for small volumes, like from one mil to a hundred mils. And pipettes have those markings at the side. Um, you can kind of see them here. Um, and that's uh, designed to only hold a single specific volume. Okay, so let's let's take a look at beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks. This is what they look like. Look like. Um, and the reason that they're not considered volumetric glassware is because they're only used for crude volume estimations. They have a pretty high error percentage, about 5%. And you can see them on the side. They're marked. Um, in the Erlenmeyer flask, you have an approximation here. And in the beaker here, you have a plus or minus 5%. This error is, it might seem kind of small, but um, in the world of chemistry, you want to be really, really precise. So you would use volumetric glassware if you wanted to get a really uh, accurate, uh, I guess, measurement. But if you wanted just a crude volume estimation, you would use a beaker and an Erlenmeyer flask. So again, beakers, Erlenmeyer flasks are not volumetric glassware. And the reason is because they're just... Uh, they're only used for crude volume estimations. And that's it for volumetric glassware. I hope you were able to learn something, um, and I hope to see you later. Thank you.